On Thursday, September 19th, Wizards of the Coast announced the Throne of Eldraine Deluxe Collection. Each deluxe collection, which is available only on magicstore.wizards.com starting October 2nd, will contain the following. 16 Throne of Eldraine collector boosters, one set-themed binder, one foil Garrick Cursed Huntsman Borderless Planeswalker card, one art print of the Borderless Garrick, Cursed Huntsman, one non-foil version of the Buy a Box Kenrith, The Returned King, a 3x3 three three card strip from a foil sheet of Throne of Eldraine, an MTG Arena Mega Code card, which gives you a digital Garrick exquisite sleeve, and unlocks card styles for six cards from Throne of Eldraine, and is all available online only, not at your local game store starting October 2nd for the price of $449 plus shipping and handling. $449. There's a lot to unpack here, but to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure I'll ever unpack it because I personally can't afford $449 for a Magic the Gathering product. And my company, Tolarian Community College, really doesn't have the budget to spend $449 on one product for one video. And that's literally what Tolarian Community College does, review products. So I think that's saying something. $449 can buy things like a brand new Nintendo Switch with Super Smash, Mario Kart Deluxe, and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. And you'd still have five bucks left over to buy a pack of Magic Cards and a Snickers bar at your local game store, where you could buy a brand new Xbox One and Borderlands 3, and you'd still have $15 left over so you can participate in a draft at your local game store. Or, you know, a brand new PlayStation 4 with Borderlands 3 and Farm Farming Simulator 19, the, the, pla the Platinum Edition, and also NASCAR Heat 4, and you'd still have $15 left over so you could participate in a draft at your local game store. Or just buy one copy of each of the Fetchlands and, uh oh, no, wait, that'd be $100 more than the Deluxe Edition. Scalding Tarn is how much? Gee, maybe the Deluxe Edition is a good deal after all. Let's take a closer look. Before I continue, I think it best to bring <laughs> Before I continue, I think it best to bring up the concept of whales in regards to both the sales industry and more specifically the collectibles and gaming industry that Magic the Gathering is a part of. A whale is a customer who regularly and reliably will buy the priciest of products, spending 10 times or more than the average customer. Whales will buy extremely premium and priced products that simply are not within the price range of the average customer. So whales are customers with the disposable income to spend thousands compared to the hundreds or even tens of dollars that the average customer can spend, making a product that is not for everyone, but rather for whales specifically is an actual business practice. But making a product specifically for whales means that you need to sell less of that product, but will actually end up making more. So let's take that $449 price tag, for example. Wizards of the Coast would only need to sell 11,135 deluxe editions to generate $5 million in sales. Comparatively, Wizards of the Coast would need to sell 1 million 250,000 booster packs to make the same amount. Whether you agree with the practice or not, I hope you see why companies do pursue this strategy. After all, finding 11,000 customers who have 449 bucks to spare on a super premium item isn't hard, which is why even if 100,000 customers scream bloody murder about said premium product, it still likely will sell out and thus justify the company in offering it again. Which is why we went from a $250 Mythic collection to a $450 Deluxe collection. If this sells out, and it likely will, expect a super premium premium deluxe collection to return in a few months at $750 or maybe even a thousand. Remember, 
these products are not for you. They are for whales. So that's where I want to take this discussion, to the whales. I've already explored at length my arguments for more equal financial access and care for the average customer. And if you have not heard those arguments, you can check out my videos about the mythic collections. However, I don't want to just keep saying the same thing ad nauseum. There's more than one valid argument or perspective for an issue. And thus, I want to approach this issue from an entirely new angle. Save the whales. For the purposes of this argument and intellectual exercise, I would like you all to begin with this hypothetical premise. Premium products such as a $449 deluxe collection that not everyone can afford is in fact an acceptable business practice. Now remember, this is an intellectual exercise here, so even if you personally disagree with that premise, I ask that you participate in this exercise for the purposes of better understanding this issue. So if we begin with the premise that yes, it is acceptable to charge $449 for a premium product made just for whales, what then are we going to ask when we evaluate that product? What should a $449 product made just for whales be like? If we want to maintain the premise that a premium product designed just for whales is an acceptable business practice, then the first key criteria is that it is providing them with collectible value and prestige, which I believe the teenagers today call, uh, bling. Is this actually giving whales the best bling for their buck? I'd like to begin with the non-card components. These are usually the least important parts of any collection box because we all know what matters most to many Magic the Gathering players, and that is, wait for it, magic cards. Still, let's see what non-magic things are included in this $450 deluxe collection. Your $450 deluxe collection comes with a nine pocket ultra pro binder with a lovely Eldraine slash Magic the Gathering corporate logo emblazoned on the front. As far as I know, this logo cannot be obtained anywhere else. And if I were Wizards of the Coast, I'd be dang sure that this isn't going to show up on shelves in a month for $19.99 because that would be some major feel bads. Uh uh, and the inside, it is made by Ultra Pro, so the inside is pretty standard. You've got the the nine by uh, the three by three pages here, and then on the back, it's got this really nice Magic the Gathering thing on the bottom. So I would, however, like to introduce you to this: the Ultra Pro Deck Builders Premium Pro Binder. Unlike the nine pocket pages of the binder included in the deluxe, this lets whales show off their premium play sets of cards that they've collected, and it even has a zipper closure for ultimate safety. I've reviewed this product before and graded it a solid A, one of my favorite portfolios on the market, in fact. It costs $26.95. Now, if you love artwork on the cover and prefer nine pockets to 12, you can get an Ultra Pro nine pocket binder with everything from Eldraine artwork to Nickel Bolas Dragon God for only $19.95. Here, the whales are getting a neat looking emblem on the cover, but not much else. I'd say this is an okay throw in, but not something extraordinarily deluxe. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's definitely not real leather, but it, it does feel really yeah. good. It's not even the highest quality binder that Ultra Pro makes. Next, we have an art print of Garrick, Cursed Huntsman. I love magic art and art prints. So the real question here is, will this artwork be available via prints from the artist at some point in the future? If this is an exclusive artwork that can never, ever be sold by the artist in the future, then that makes for a collector's print. But if it is something that the artist may one day be selling at Magic Fests, perhaps in an even larger size, then pricing is likely again in the $20 range of value, making this something others easily can get a hold of and in no way special bling for the whales. Next is one that really frustrates me, a three by three piece of an uncut sheet. So this is this is a slice of the actual uncut. Yeah. So each sheet. three by three one is going to be it's it's not going to be the same one for everyone. Stop. The very fact that this is a piece of an uncut sheet and not the entire uncut sheet means that you can no longer call this an uncut sheet. Now, uncut sheets are, I feel, a great example of premium bling. 
You can't buy them through any conventional means. They're usually only offered as charity items. But again, this isn't an uncut sheet. It's a cut sheet. There's still a bit of specialness to it, but keep in mind that an entire uncut sheet can be purchased on eBay for about 100 bucks. And I do think it is fair to say that an uncut sheet is superior to a cut sheet in terms of premium bling. Before we move on to the actual magic cards that the deluxe collection contains, there's a kind of transitional item. The Deluxe Collection comes with an Arena Mega Code, which grants a handful of Arena items for the discerning whale. Now, I do want to point out that if the whale in question doesn't play Magic Arena, then this code is absolutely useless, but assuming that they do, let's see the bling it offers them. A digital Garrick exquisite sleeve. Okay, well, there's nothing that meets the definition of substance-free bling than digital sleeves for your digital cards. The code also grants a card style for six cards from Eldrain: Garrick Cursed Huntsman, Charming Prince, The Magic Mirror, Witch's Venge, Vengeance, Bone Crusher Giant, and Questing Beast. I, I don't know, call me crazy, but given that you are spending $450 on this deluxe collection, instead of just unlocking six card styles out of 250 plus, how about make it special? The card styles for the set of Eldrain unlock. There you go. You buy the deluxe edition, your Eldrain cards on Arena all have that premium card style. The code will also give them one copy of each card, which Okay, but why not give the whales a treat and just give them the premium style unlocked on all Throne of Eldraine cards? It's not like they can trade them away to other people. But all of this that I've mentioned so far is really superfluous. Magic players want magic cards, and premium whale magic players want premium magic cards. So what does the deluxe collection contain in terms of cards? One foil Garrick, Cursed Huntsman, Borderless Planeswalker card. So unless I am missing something here, this is just the borderless version of Garrick that is both available in the collector's boosters. So that means this is artwork that anyone can crack? Why not offer something unique? Why not throw in some original artwork? You'll also get one non-foil version of the bio box Kenrith the Returned King. This is getting weird to me. We've hit the point where the non-foil version of cards are the new extreme premium, especially when it comes to bio box promos. I'd say that at least maybe they should have made the bio box promos regular non-foil and then in the deluxe, yeah, here's how you can get the foil version of it, but it's the reverse, I, I don't know. But in terms of actual individual magic cards, there's two in this $450 product. A Garrick that other players can open in packs and a non-foil version of the buy box promo. That's it in terms of individual magic cards. Heck, the collector's editions, which cost $250, had over a dozen planeswalkers from throughout Magic's history, each with unique artwork and borders. The deluxe edition also comes with packs of magic cards premium packs. The deluxe edition will contain 16 collector's boosters. Collector's boosters go for about 20 to 25 dollars each amazingly, so we can estimate 16 at 320 to 400 dollars, which to me is mind-blowing, but that's more a statement on how I think there's better bling in the $4 Eldraine boosters and, oops, sorry, that's a different video. This is really the meat of the deluxe collection. You're spending $450 to get $320 to $400 worth of collector's boosters. So if you are already going to buy a whole bunch of collector's boosters and you like things like the binder and the arena code or the non-foil Kenrith, then that's where this becomes a collection you might want to pick up. But as far as premium bling for whales, I am just not seeing it in this. Remember Expeditions from Battle for Zendikar packs or Kaladesh Inventions? Having one of those is bling for whales because it is a magic card that in most cases is played in lots of places and has a unique and special artwork and borders that have never and likely will never be seen again. Expeditions and Masterpieces were something special. The meat of this collection, however, is just a potentially better bargain on an already over-the-counter product. And that's only if you combine it with things like a cut, uncut sheet and a non-foil buy a box promo of a legendary and the Ultra Pro binder. What I would have designed for whales at the $450 level would have been something that offered cards, magic cards, never mind a small sized print of Garrick, but actual magic cards that are played in the game and here 
in the deluxe collection feature unique artwork and borders. Never mind a non-foil Kenrith. Give me a Kenrith with artwork not available anywhere else. A full art, true full art, not this stretched out nonsense that they're doing all of a sudden. Or a special, amazing frame and throw in half a dozen other Eldraine legendaries and planeswalkers so that Commander and Oathbreaker and Brawl Whales can just go nuts. Those amazing frames and unique artworks for the Eldraine showcase cards? Take half a dozen popular commanders and offer them in this style of frame and artwork. That'll be some real bragging showcase collection rights. Hey, you know that Kaladesh invention of Soul Ring that's one of the most amazing and coveted commander pieces? You still have that border on your hard drive, Watsi. Commission Vulcan to do an arcane signet in the Kaladesh style and offer it in an invention frame and then make a promise that this will never be available anywhere else. Make the Zendikar fetch lands as expeditions, but this time in the land style of Eldraine or Lorwyn or Ravnica. I don't know if I'm going to be doing an is it worth it to buy video for the deluxe collection. And I don't know whether you agree or disagree with the business practice of designing products not for everyone, but for whales. But I do know in examining the deluxe collection that if I were to evaluate it as a product for whales, scrutinizing what it offers whales, that evaluation would be that this has very little in the way of actual prestige items, actual bling for your buck, or actual deluxe collector's pieces. If I were a whale with $450 and looking to show off in magic, there'd be a plethora of alternatives available to me. Heck, I'd rather have that Kaladesh Soul Ring invention than the complete contents of this collection. And that card is still $100 less than the Deluxe Collection. But that is just my evaluation, and the one that really matters is yours. So now I want to hear from you. Do you plan to pick up a Deluxe Collection, or even if you do not, do you think its contents are good prestige items for whales? What would you buy if you were given $450 to spend on Magic Bling instead of a deluxe collection? Let me know in the comments below.